Okay, good. I'll just turn a little bit this way. <clears throat> this is a, a Jesuit Cossack with a Beretta of a novice. They stopped wearing these in the 60s when they became more secular, quote unquote. But uh, I lived near a Jesuit novitiate, used to be a novitiate. It was uh, financed by Nicholas Brady. Nicholas Brady was the head of a hundred corporations and he was richer than the Rockefellers. So those are some of the white Gentiles who are Knights of Malta that we never hear anything about. And so I intend to bring them to your attention today. The Jesuit order, ad majorium de glorium, that is their, their uh, cry for the greater glory of God. And of course, it's not the God of the Bible. It's the God that they seek to make the Pope to be the universal monarch of the world. The Pope is merely the holder of uh, who they consider to be the risen Horus. And we shall see that the papacy is nothing more than ancient Babylonian religion perfected in Egypt. I guess I need to turn it on. Okay, that would help. J. Edgar Hoover. There's that uh, Shriner, 33rd degree Freemason, Kennedy assassin. Wonderful individual, sodomite. What did this man say about a conspiracy? Wow. The individual is handicapped by coming face to face with a conspiracy so monstrous that he cannot believe it exists. That's J. Edgar Hoover. Here is Charles Chiniqui. He was a priest who was saved, came to know the Lord, and he was the one who exposed the Jesuits in the Lincoln assassination. What did he say about a conspiracy? Rome is in constant conspiracy against the rights and liberties of man over all the world, but she is particularly so in the United States. So we see a massive papal conspiracy against what was once a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant nation and which documents the Constitution Bill of Rights all sprang from the Protestant Reformation since the Jesuit Order's Counter-Reformation. It seeks to destroy everything that ever was born out of the Reformation. And by the way, I am Rodin, the Jesuit. Rodin is the key, the evil Jesuit out of Eugene Sue's Wandering Jew. Eugene Sue's Wandering Jew was one of the major works that brought about the Second French Revolution in 1848. This is what um, a past Jesuit general said. Let us, I, I apologize for this. Is it difficult for you to read the red? You can't, you can't read it? Okay, let's turn the light down, please. Can we turn the lights down, please? No, it's soft. It's going through a stand converter. Okay. Yeah, all the way out. Still difficult? Can't see it at all. Well. Okay. Well, then I'll, I'll, I'll hit the high point for you. And by the way, this will be available for you later if you wish to purchase this for yourselves for your own historical reference. Okay. The only other option well, would be for you to read it right off your laptop. Okay. Well. You want to do it? They have the video. That, that, that's. That, that's okay. I, I, I want. The, it always been. Okay. Well, I will say this, that the Jesuits, the Jesuit general wants to have an empire of the world. So here we have the, the absolute proof that the Jesuit order is out for a one world government. To deny it is to deny history, to deny it is to deny, to deny the very words of the Jesuits themselves. So what is this nonsense that we're uh, uh, conspiratorial historians? Are you a coincidence historian? It's ridiculous. So they have said themselves, they want a universal monarch under the Pope, the Pope that they will control. Okay, now I've, uh, Luigi de Santis was a former censor of the Holy Office of the Inquisition. 
Again, he said that the Jesuits want universal dominion alone. Peter Hans Kolbenbach, former Jesuit general, he retired in 2008 because you see the Jesuits are busy fomenting a huge Third World War, and they are now going to have two men to orchestrate it, Peter Hans Kolbenbach and the new Jesuit general, Adolfo Nicholas. Adolfo Nicholas is a Spaniard. He is the one in charge of the entire Far East. He will control China, Indonesia, the whole Pacific Rim, coordinate that with our two-front war that's coming for American Navy when they sink one of our aircraft carriers. The, we have here Benedict XVI with the former Black Pope. Openly, the Black Pope is subordinate to the White Pope, but secretly he is his master. And the White Pope will do everything that the Black Pope tells him to do, or he will pay. Again, the modern, the present day Black Pope with the White Pope, Adolfo Nicholas with Benedict. And there he is, the rulers of evil, with the Pope himself. M.F. Cusack, she was a nun, she got saved, came to know the Lord, and she wrote the tremendous classic, The Black Pope, which I do offer with my book. And she essentially says that the black pope is the master of the white pope with a show of submission by the latter, by the white pope. The white pope, upon the white pope, on the pope being declared the infallible in 1870, the pope was declared infallible in 1870. It's the white pope that will lead, but the black pope is holding the reins. So we must always remember that the black pope, the Jesuit general, controls the white pope. Whatever his policies are, remember the Vatican, the papal policy is the open policy is the false policy. The Pope is against the war in Iraq. It's nonsense. He wants this war. His Knights of Malta caused it. The man who brought down the World Trade Center was George J. Tenet. So they have a secret but true policy, but an open but false policy, which is typical of the Roman two-headed Janus. Who is the Pope? Who is this man? Every Pope is an Antichrist. The papacy is the dynasty of these Antichrists. The final Pope will be the Antichrist. The Jesuit order has ruled every Pope since 1814, and it will rule the last and final Pope, who will be Satan's Antichrist, the universal monarch of the world. Double-headed Phoenix, you see this everywhere. The double-headed phoenix symbolizes the coming man-beast who is alive, he suffers death, he arises out of the ashes of his death, and he becomes the universal monarch of the world, which we read in Revelation 13, who can make war with the beast? He is killed, he comes back to life, and he rules the world. The whole course of human history is the coming of this man-beast to rule the world from a third rebuilt Hebrew temple in Jerusalem, and he will also rebuild Babylon, because this is the reason for this war of annihilation in Iraq. It's gonna be nothing but urban renewal for the next 20, 30 years. Whoever becomes president, the US forces will remain in Iraq. Here's Ignatius Loyola on the bottom, and this is a chart of 1640, and it's Loyola who brings to power the double-headed phoenix, the risen pope, the man-beast. If a man consider the origin of this great ecclesiastical dominion, he will easily perceive that the papacy is none other than the ghost of the deceased Roman Empire sitting crowned on the grave thereof. The papacy is nothing more than the continuation of the Roman Empire. The pope is the Roman Caesar. The College of Cardinals is the Roman Senate. It is still a political empire under the garb of religious clothing, like this. So as to disarm you, to make you think that we're such holy and righteous men, when we're white as sepulchers. There he is. Now that's a classic picture of him. I, it, it couldn't be better. <laughs> okay, he's the Caesar, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and by the way, that's his title. There's his throne in Rome. The light is the, the light of Horus because 
The Pope, being the vicar of Christ, is in fact the vicar of Horus. He keeps the place of Horus until Horus arrives, who will be the coming risen Pope. And I will show you how Horus is the papal Jesus. On what meat does this our Caesar feed that he's grown so great? Who was the first Pope? How did he get his universal spiritual power, temporal power, right to deity, infallibility? Well, first of all, the first Pope, which they tell us, was Peter. He was not the first Pope. Peter was a racial Jew. He was a Gentile, Gen, not a Gentile. He was the apostle to the racial Jews, according to the scriptures. He was never given the keys of the kingdom of heaven as promised by Christ. That's all future for the Davidic kingdom yet to come. Peter never went to Rome and his tomb was discovered in 1953 in Jerusalem. Now we're going to beginning, we're going to, we will start to begin with the papacy, how, this, how Roman Catholicism under the guise of Christianity began. Because true biblical Christianity is not Roman Catholicism. They're mutually exclusive. Roman Catholicism and the papacy always persecutes true Bible-believing people, as I will show you. Constantine is the founder of Roman Catholicism, just as Muhammad is the founder of Islam. He creates Roman Catholicism. Now this is a quote here I take from Tony Bushby. Now he's not a Bible believer, but he has a wonderful quote. And he shows how Constantine creates this new God for Rome. And they took a vote. And the new God's name with Jesus and Krishna would be Jesus Christ. So Constantine the Great creates this Jesus Christ of Romanism as the new God for Catholicism. It's not the true Lord Jesus Christ or Yeshua HaMashiach of the scriptures. There's Constantine where he creates Christianity for the Roman Empire. Remember, he's a man of war, a man of blood. Papal Roman Catholicism, Christianized, is really nothing more than ancient Roman paganism. And ancient Roman paganism is nothing more than mystery Babylon religion. And according to Hislop, and if you don't have Hislop's The Two Babylons, you should have that for your library. It has been known all along that Popery was baptized paganism, but God is now making it manifest that the paganism which Rome has baptized is in all its essential elements, the very paganism which prevailed in the ancient literal Babylon. Rome is in very deed the Babylon of the Apocalypse. Okay. Mystery Babylon religion starts after the flood. Remember, there's no idolatry before the flood. From the time of Adam to Methuselah or till Noah's flood, there is no uh, idolatry. It begins after the flood in the first city in the land of Shinar, Babylon. And it's built upon the promise of a world ruler. Well, the Lord said that he would send his seed to redeem what Adam had lost. Well, if the Lord's going to have a seed, so does the devil. Because the devil doesn't have one original idea. So he has his seed. And what happens is, is that uh, a universal myth is created by Semiramis, and the myth sets forth a murdered king, reborn as a deified man-child, intended to rule the world. And the child's mother is the virgin queen of heaven. There are four aspects of this. It's history, it's mythology, it's symbolism, and practice. <clears throat> Nimrod was the worship of a deified black man. He's the priest king on his throne, he unifies all people at Babel under one world government. He's executed by the godly Shem. His wife, Semiramis, laments his death, and then she creates the mythology. Here's an artist's view of Tower of Babel. And remember, the Tower of Babel was composed of peoples. It was the mixing of the races that the Lord had created after the flood. The Lord created the three major races for the purpose of keeping mankind separate. This man would unite against him as he did before the flood when there was only one race, one landmass, and one language. So, in Babel you have universal race mixing and they have three things in common. Commerce, sex, and war. 
exactly what we have common here in the United States of America today. Mystery Babylon religion is perfected in Egypt, and you have these pyramids. Well, the first, the farthest, represents Osiris. The middle one is Isis, and the small one is Horus. You're going to see this Isis-Horus connection everywhere. This is the middle pyramid, Isis. She brings forth the sun, the man-beast. He's half man, he's half beast. As the Roman papacy will bring forth the final pope, who will be killed, brought back to life, possessed by the devil, and be the man-beast. And the symbolism you will see everywhere. The history, we now go to the mythology. You have the pagan trinity, which is the eternal father, divine son, the virgin mother. The virgin mother, she's the queen of heaven. In Babylon, she's Semiramis and Tammuz. In Egypt, she's Isis and Horus. Greece, Maya and Hermes. Rome, Fortuna and Jupiter. And in Papal room, Rome is Mary and Jesus. Not the Mary and Jesus of the New Testament. We have pagan Babylon, pagan Egypt, the same mother-child worship. In Egypt, you have Nimrod, which is Osiris. Horus, which is Tammuz, and Isis, which is Semiramis. And the sign of my order will be IHS, which Ignatius Loyola put together himself. Isis, Horus, Set. Not Seb, but Set. And we have the Matrix. We have Morpheus. He is Nimrod. He is uh, a Babylonian Nimrod. He's the black man. We have Neo, he's Horus, he's Tammuz, and we have Trinity, she's Isis, or Semiramis. This theme, the Jesuits in control of Hollywood, bring out everywhere. We have <clears throat> the divine child Horus, father, son, god Osiris. So we have Horus is born from a divine lotus flower. And he's Osiris in death and Horus in rebirth. The Pope, as he lives today, is Osiris. When he's killed and brought back to life, he will be Horus in his rebirth. And every Pope wishes he would be killed and be brought back to life. That's why they are the vicar of Christ or the vicar of Horus. The symbolism. We have the pagan trinity, the equilateral triangle, obelisk, all-seeing eye, the mitre hat, the satyr, the globe. <clears throat> In Egypt, we have King Tut's tomb. In Rome, same all-seeing eye, same paganism. Here's from a church in Paris, the all-seeing eye long before the creation of the Bavarian Illuminati. All seeing eye in a cathedral in Milano, Italy. The all seeing eye <clears throat> in this particular picture in the Vatican, in the midst of a pyramid. And we have the snake eating its tail, the very same symbol Madame Blavatsky will use in her Theosophy for Society, all Roman. Here we have a, a building in Spain. Inside is Horus, it's the triangle. The round is, is the, the phallic symbol. The opening is vaginal. So out of the vaginal comes the Horus, the risen pope. It's all sexual. Here we have the Judas chair of the Inquisition in a pyramid form. We have the all-seeing eye in a cathedral in Spain, right there. We have the pyramids from, King Char from uh, the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V in Spain and the double-headed phoenix because you see all the kings, all the monarchs, all the Illuminati bloodlines, they're all purposed to bring Horus, the risen pope, to power. There's a mitre, the Bishop of London, Interesting, a hexagram, the, the crescent moon, and the skull from Skull and Bones. 
the papacy controls Orthodox Judaism, it controls Islam, it controls the bones, it controls apostate Masonic Protestantism. We control it all. Because you see, before we could implement our world government, we have to control all the religions. We've got them, including orthodoxy. Here is a, <clears throat> on a Jesuit reduction in Paraguay. And they build this building with an obelisk form. We have the three rows of stones. And we have the cross symbolizing Horus on the top of the pyramid. And then we have the pyramid here. Just like we have the pyramid here at Dachau. Just like we have the pyramid here at Auschwitz. It tells you who did it. We did it. We ran Auschwitz. We just carried out our Jesuit oath. And it was not just Jews. It was Polish nationalists. It was anybody. And the first ones to go to Auschwitz were Czech Protestants. All seeing eye, cathedral in Belgium. All seeing eye, again in the same cathedral in Sunburst. All talking of Horace. The Jesuit order, we are the foundation to bring Horace to power. We are the foundation to bring the risen Pope to power. And again, this is a vaginal symbol. Out of Mother Church comes forth Horace. This is on the cathedral in St. John's uh, Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception in New Brunswick. You have a pyramid with an all-seeing eye and the tetragrammaton of Orthodox Judaism. You see, we control the Babylonian Talmud. And the doctrines of the Babylonian Talmud are almost identical to our canon law. And we did this to create universal hatred for the Jews. We hate the Jews. We want them all to be annihilated. Because, you see, they rival our right to claim the world, to rule the world. And it will be either the Jewish Yeshua HaMashiach that will rule the world, or it will be our risen Pope who will rule the world, one or the other. This is a coin out of Germany, 1616, with the all-seeing eye, IHS, German Ducat. Here we have the Jesuits in Switzerland with the all-seeing eye. All-seeing eye above the compass and square and the G stands for Yesu, the church, or Jesuit order in Rome. Aleister Crowley, that lovely man, he was one of ours, advocated our doctrines. Here we have all-seeing eye above the throne of the Romanovs in the Kremlin. So we control the Kremlin to the Knights of Malta and the double-headed phoenix. Obelisks. These are all phallic. At the top of the ob obelisk is Horus. He is the consummation. This is Roman. This is Vatican. And then we have them in every capital city in the world. You know, what we really need is a feminist movement to call for the destruction of the Washington Monument. <laughs> you know, that's what we need. <laughs> Okay, um, here's Ones, the Babylonian fish god. When Nimrod returns from the world of the dead as Tammuz. Well, look at this. Does that ring a bell? It's the Pope's mitre. The Pope is Ones, returning from the dead. And there he's waving to his friend Dagon. There, how you doing? The mitre, the risen Pope. This is the horn-hoofed Baphomet God-man that you will find in the Vatican treasury. Why would the Vatican have such an abomination as this? Because this is the end of what they're here for. You see, Satan has used the papacy to bring forth his final risen pope, his seed. And the, by the way, the papacy couldn't care less about the Catholic people. Do you know that? Do you realize we kill Catholics all the time? Do you realize how many Roman Catholic Vietnamese we killed? 
You realize how many Bavarian Roman Catholics we killed? About 250,000 in Munich when we firebombed Munich, World War II, using FDR and Churchill? Because you see, the Bavarian Roman Catholics hated the temporal power of the Pope and his infallibility, and they would not budge. The priest von Dollinger, who would take on anybody in the papacy to debate this, what did the Pope do to him? He defrocked him, and he excommunicated him. And so as a result, we had to get rid of all those liberal Roman Catholics in Munich. There's Baphomet symbolizing the final risen Pope. And these are the Knights Templars, which are today high-level Freemasons. Clutching a globe. A Persian sun god. Just like the Pope today, clutching a globe. Lastly, it's practice. The papacy is a work salvation religion. The biblical religion, the Bible-based faith, is that there is nothing we can do to be justified before God except truly believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Salvation is by grace through faith, and not, not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works as any man should boast. Papacy is all works. You must do this, you must do that, you must go to have all the sacraments. And by the way, Ignatius Loyola never had last rites. He knew it was a joke. Christmas, Yule Day, Child's Day. The slain Nimrod brought back to life. We're going to cut down that tree. We're going to bring the tree back into the house. We're going to decorate it. We're going to put a star on top. All looking forward to the risen Pope. The, the myth of Hiram Abiff in Freemasonry. In the third degree, he's killed. The three ruffians kill Hiram Abiff. And what happens? The master mason of the lodge, he gives him the lion's paw because you see Satan is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He gives him the lion's paw, whispers maha bone in his ear, which is the penis. And all of a sudden, Hiram Abiff comes back to life because he's the risen pope. That's who it symbolizes. The Babylonian Messiah whose tragic death and subsequent restoration to life and glory form the cornerstone of ancient paganism as now championed in the papacy. Well, the first bishop of Rome is Sericius. He's the first one to be called Pope. Emperor Phocas is the one who gives the spiritual power to Boniface III. So now the Pope is given the first of his two keys, his spiritual power. One of the popes, Gregory I, said anybody who is called universal bishop is the forerunner of Antichrist. <laughs> Focus, again, gives this power to uh, Boniface III as universal spiritual power. The edifice to this universal spiritual power is this monument in Rome, put in 608. It's a monument to Focus. So the conclusion is, the spiritual power of the Pope never came from Christ or God or the Bible. It came from Phocas, a murderer, an emperor of Byzantium, or Constantinople. Well, now we have the creation of Islam. Muhammad was the creation of the papacy. Because as we shall see, Islam is the greatest sword of the church that has ever been created. Their doctrines are identical. The crescent. The crescent holds the host. Islam holds the papacy. The crescent. Whoop. The crescent holds the virgin and child. There's Mussolini. He was presented the sword of Islam. Hailed as protector of Islam. And what does he do? He attacks the black Ethiopian country of Ethiopia. He kills 700,000 black non-Roman Catholic Christians. And by the way, there's a nice little Ethiopian gal that works in the, in the restaurant down here. So you have to visit her. She works in the sports bar. It's the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem with Adolf Hitler working together during the crusade of World War II. And during World War II, as I cover in my book, 
Hitler, Frankel, Mussolini, Stalin, FDR, Churchill, all worked together. They all worked together. Just as George Bush, Tony Blair, Osama bin Laden, the Saud dynasty, they all work together. Because we Jesuits control the governments of all those countries. We control their banks. We've hoarded all the gold. All we've given those people is fake, phony, baloney currencies that's worth nothing. And to top it off, our gold isn't even collateral. And the gold all in North America is in the Federal Reserve Bank in New York City, which our Knights of Malta run. And we always put a token Jew up front to make you think that the Jews run it all. Here is uh, Hajimin al Husseini with the SS. And here's another SS officer <laughs> with his Hajimin al Husseini. Working together to bring about 9 11 to justify a crusade. Okay. The deal was to eliminate the Jews and non papal Christians out of North Africa, to protect the Augustinian monks, and to give Jerusalem to the Pope. Because Jerusalem belonged to the eastern part of the empire, it did not belong to Rome. So what happens? Muhammad conquers Mecca. And we have this division of Sunni and Shia, which is very important in this crusade. And we'll get to it a little later. The sons of Ishmael and Esau are now Muslims, and they become the perfect sword of the church because according to the Bible, Ishmael is a wild man. His hand is against every man. And you couple that with Islam, you got a sword that is, well, nearly invincible. Omar the Great takes Jerusalem. I apologize for the red. That's my fault. So here's Omar. He takes Jerusalem, and he, re and he builds this abomination called the Mosque of Omar. So you see, our Templars that we control, we control the Knights Templars, we control the Knights of Malta, we control all high-level Freemasonry. During this crusade, we're going to bring down the Dome of the Rock. We're going to bring down the Alaska Mosque, and we're going to blame it on you Americans so we can incite a huge Muslim invasion into America for which reason Fidel Castro was given Cuba and we trained Fidel Castro for seven years a mosque in Medina a mosque in Mecca and those also are going to go up in smoke too to unite Islam against the great Satan of the West So, what does Islam do? It takes North Africa. And here's a classic example of the papacy using Islam to kill off its enemies. The Visigoths here were Arians. They did not believe in, in the papal trinity. So Islam was used to invade Spain and into southern France to neutralize the Arians. And then after they were neutralized, the papacy reconquered Spain and drove them away. This is an example how the Rome uses Islam to destroy its enemies. Here's Charles Martel, the Battle of Tours, keeping Islam out of France. Here we have Islam taking all of North Africa, this area, Spain, but it doesn't take the western half of the empire, which will become orthodox. So the Pope's going to remedy that. So by 1580, Islam is out of Spain, has taken North Africa, has destroyed the, the uh, Jewish communities for the most part, Bible-believing Arabs, and absorbed Turkey and the Grecian area. Because we have to kill off all Bible-believing Christianity anywhere we can find it, and we're going to use Islam to do it. In Africa today, Islam is slowly moving down to Africa. Remember, the beginning of the, the Inquisition against um, Ethiopia was World War II, and now Ethiopia is half Muslim, half Christian. Well, we're going to continue to kill off all the Christian peoples of Africa, and we are going, just like in South Africa today, as I will show, that the historic white Protestant South Africans are being killed out by the Knights of Malta, controlled by the Queen. And by the way, we control the Queen of England. We control all the monarchs. If they don't submit to us, we kill them, and we use our international intelligence community to do it. 
and you have to be a special person to escape our assassins. Here's the war today. This is all Sunni, 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 Sunni. But look at the Shia. They first invaded Afghanistan, then Iraq. The Shia have to be dealt with because you see the Shia, the leadership of the Shia is regarded as infallible and divine. Whereas the leadership of the Sunni is regarded not as infallible and divine. And there can only be one man who's infallible and divine on the face of the earth. And that's the Pope. That's our Pope. So therefore we have to eliminate the Shia because they're reigning on our parade. And so you can know that there will be an invasion into Iran. And there's the Pope kissing the Quran. And why wouldn't he? Islam has been his greatest servant. Pope Stephen III is now given temporal power, 156 years after spiritual power. And now the Pope has the two keys. He's given the temporal power by Pepin. Universal temporal power comes from Pepin, not from the Bible. So now let's just take a look and see how temporal power and spiritual power works. We order you in the name of religion to invade his states, burn his cities, and massacre his people. You see, we Jesuits control the wars. We decide who we're going to kill. We decide which peoples are our enemies, and we have various tools to do it. All the while, we look holy and righteous. Here's the two keys. Temporal power, spiritual power, triple crown, Lord of heaven, Lord of earth, Lord of hell. And what is said to the Pope when he is coronated? Take thou the tiara adorned with the triple crown and know that thou art the father of princes and kings and art the governor of the world. The Pope is the governor of the world. That's why he kisses the ground when he arrives. John Paul kissed the ground when he came here, but Benedict XVI didn't do it because there were too many of us who knew what that meant. This is on the cathedral in St. John's. The two keys, temporal and spiritual power, enforced by the sword. The first amendment to our constitution removed the sword so that these two keys could not be enforced. But we've overcome that because you see we Jesuits at Georgetown wrote the Patriot Act and that removes the sword. Here is Charlemagne the first emperor of the Romans, the one who is the father of the Holy Roman Empire. And what does he seek to do? Unite Europe under the Pope. Here is Charlemagne being crowned King of the Franks on Christmas Day. Wonderful day. Now he's being forced, Charlemagne is forcing the Saxons to give up their nationalism and submit to this baptism of Rome or be put to the sword. What's the difference between Islam and Romanism? Nothing. You submit or we put you to the sword. And when we can't put you to the sword openly, we'll put you to the sword with our allopathic medical profession. Or our veterans hospitals. Okay. By the way, here's Hitler. Here's Charlemagne and Hitler. They both, they both um, possess the sword of Longimus. On Charlemagne's sarcophagus, you have Persephone. On the Capitol building, you have Persephone. On the top. And there she is, the Virgin Mary. And the White House is named after Jesuit Andrew White. And you see, in 1868, we lost America. We lost the historic <coughs> white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Baptist Calvinist limited Federal Republic of America. And what was created in its place was 14th Amendment, Holy Roman, corporate fascist, American Empire. The Pope's Holy Roman, American Empire of the West. And every president since Andrew Johnson has been a Charlemagne. This is the capital of Pennsylvania and Harrisburg, fashioned after the Vatican. Here's the Pope facing Horace, the obelisk, yet to come. Here's the door of the papacy on St. Peter's 
six, six, six. You have two wings, two wings, two wings, <clears throat> across, cross, cross, and six hexagrams. <laughs> okay. You have Johnson, Theodore Roosevelt with James Cardinal Gibbons, who was Roosevelt's master, and John Paul II, who was Bush's master. We have a major thing happening in 1054. We have the Great Schism with the build, with the creation of the Orthodox Church who refuses to accept the Pope's temporal power. Therefore, we are going to make war on Orthodoxy. We have Hildebrand, also called Hellbrand. He is the first example of wielding absolute spiritual and temporal power. He was the greatest genius of his age. What happens? We have then later Jerusalem is taken from Islam by uh, the First Crusade and the Sovereign Military Order of Malta is created. A few other orders we get are the Templars and then we're going to get the Teutonic Knights. The Teutonic Knights are important because you see this is going to be the revival of Hitler's of the Teutonic Knights called the SS. The SS with the Teutonic Knights. Here we have Peter the Hermit preaching, preaching the Pope's crusade. Take Jerusalem from the infidel Turkish Saracens. Knights of Malta. And the Knights of Malta. Uh, would help to bring the risen Pope to power. Here's one of their cruisers. Here's Rupert. He was the crown prince of Bavaria. He and Cardinal von Fallhaber bring Hitler to power. See the cross of the Knights of Malta? Blessed Gerard, quote unquote, the father of the Knights of Malta, and we have Queen Elizabeth. The entire foreign policy of the British Empire for the last 200 years has been for the benefit of the papacy. The Queen is nothing more than the vassal of the Pope. Well, they massacred the Jews, they massacred the, uh, the Muslims, and they created their kingdom of Jerusalem. They're solid in. The importance of all this, and I don't want this to be boring to you, but you can't understand the reason why Israel has been created today unless you understand the kingdom of Jerusalem. Israel today is the Pope's revived kingdom of Jerusalem. He will sacrifice the entire United States of America to preserve it because this is the place where the third temple has to be built for the risen horse to sit and he will never allow it to be destroyed so true Israel will benefit out of this war there will be many Jews killed but, you, but the kingdom of Jerusalem where Israel as we know it will never be destroyed because Horus is coming here we have the Templars we have the Teutonic Knights now notice this it's a red background on white with a black cross, exactly as a swastika. It's all Teutonic. And the Teutonic Knights were German. And the SS, the ruins, the, the Runic SS was the SS in Runic letters, and ruins were German letters. Okay, we have the Latin Kingdom of Jerusalem established. It's uh, destroyed in, 17, in 1291. The Mamelukes kill off the Templars, drive, kill off the remaining Catholics there. And so 500 years later, we Jesuits are going to take vengeance. You see, because we control Napoleon Bonaparte. Abbey Sias was one of ours. And so in this catastrophe called the invasion of Egypt, of course we're going to lose. Napoleon's going to lose. But in the process, we're going to kill every Mameluke. We're going to kill the bodyguard of the Sultan of Egypt because it was the Mamelukes that ran out the Templars. So we're just going to take vengeance. And if we have to wait 500 years to take vengeance, we will. You have the Great Schism between Constantinople. Constantinople is regarded as the second Rome. And we will use Islam to take it. We have the Second Crusade. 
And Pius XII would use Hitler to murder the Jews of Eurasia with the SS. And the peoples of Russia, the Orthodox peoples of Russia with Operation Barbarossa. By the way, Operation Barbarossa was named after a crusader. It was a crusade. The man who led the Third Crusade was Frederick Barbarossa. So Hitler and Stalin are working together for the destruction of the Jews of the Pale of Settlement, as well as the destruction of the Orthodox peoples of Russia, as well as the destruction of the Lutheran peoples of Eastern Germany from which the Reformation came. It was a wonderful synchronization of all the dictators. And this is how the history of the 20th century must be rewritten. Pope Innocent III, a real antichrist. Well, I'm going to have to decide to read what I'm going to read and skip on because I have more to cover. Well, here's what Innocent III said. For the Pope holdeth place not on earth, not simply of a man, but of the one true God. And now we have the killing of the Abigenses, the murder of them all. Now the Fourth Crusade, and the Bolshevik Revolution will take the third Moscow. See, we Jesuits ran the Bolshevik Revolution. And we used front Jews for it. We love to blame the Jews for what we do. Pope Boniface VIII, what did he say? I have the authority of the King of Kings. I am all in all, so that God himself and I, the Vicar of God, have but one cons cons consistory. consistory. And I am able to do almost all that God can do. What therefore can you make of me but God? And George Bush waits upon him hand and foot, the little lapdog that he is. Ah, George Bush does just what we want him to do. If he doesn't, we will remove him. He said, I am Caesar, I am emperor. The Pope considers himself Caesar and emperor. Here's Pius IX, killer of Lincoln. I am sovereign, I claim to be the sovereign judge on earth and the director of the conscience of men, of the peasant that tills the field, the prince that sits on his throne, the household that lives in the shade of privacy, and the legislature that makes the laws for kingdoms. I am the sole, last, supreme judge of what is right and wrong. Now you understand what's going on in Washington? Now you understand why they don't do anything for us? Oh, pardon me, they do everything for us. <laughs> what did Pope Leo XIII say? We hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. This is Cardinal Rampolla. He's a member of the OTO. Just like Aleister Crowley. He was a Secretary of State to the Pope, Leo the Thirteenth. What's this bit about Rome being against Freemasonry? Remembering that Stalin, Churchill, and Hitler and FDR were all Masons. Here's Pius XI. What does he say? I am Pope. I am King over all. I am God on earth. When I speak, my word is the word of God. And you are to remember this as long as you live. What does that do for your national sovereignty? Can you govern your own country with someone like this interfering? Now the Inquisition. The dogs of the Lord. This is St. Dominic. Thomas Aquinas. There's a park named name after Thomas Aquinas nearby here. It's no murder to kill a heretic. I was taught in Bible college that he was one of the few who had the light during the Dark Ages. <laughs> that shows you all these Bible colleges, for the most part, are controlled by the Jesuits. You'll never hear a word about it. Now, the international intelligence community, which then was the Inquisition, which is now the international intelligence community. Remembering that the CIA, the Mossad, the FBI, the SVR, the FSB, uh, BND, they all work together. Here's the banner of the Inquisition. Outfits. The crosses the condemned would carry. A castle with all the implements of torture. This is Bavaria. This is the castle of the Wittelsbach, of Rupert, that he gave to the Gestapo to carry out all their tortures, their Inquisition in Bavaria. And just so that we would eliminate all the evidence, we had FDR bomb it in World War II, because if the American GIs would have went in there, they would have found all the evidence. This is Lubyanka. 
We ran the Lubyanka. We tortured more people than you could imagine. And we trained our Jesuits there. We trained an American Jesuit there. His name was Walter Sisek. Souls and Iskins <clears throat> tells you of what they did. Yes, yeah, someone's far-seeing mind planned it all. Inquisitional dungeon. Being questioned in the Inquisition. Kind of like an IRS audit. Because you see, the IRS works for us too. It's not about the money, folks. It's about the information. As you know, the majority of you don't owe the income tax in the first place. If you don't have a federal privilege, you don't owe the tax. It's a privilege tax. That's why Title 26 is special law. Okay. It's torture implements. This one was nice. It poured molten hot lead down your ears. This is interesting. They had this thing about the craze, about the purity of blood, so that if they would find anybody with any Jewish blood or Moorish blood, they would be condemned by the Inquisition. Sound familiar? That's why Hitler's SS was, again, an Inquisition. Torture implements. It's a quote with regard, I must skip. And here are the ovens at Auschwitz. Like I said, the first ones to go to Auschwitz were Czech Protestants. Here's the SS, the long black line in Bavaria. They're marching. It's in a movie I found. It's so not a very good picture, but the Jesuits also have their long black line. We have our long black line. We marched three abreast. The SS did the same thing because it was modeled after the Jesuit order. Okay. More torture. Hitler with Rom, who would later be replaced by Himmler. There's Hitler at the particular church of Our Lady that was built upon a Jewish synagogue that had been destroyed in a pogrom in the 1300s. Perfect place to take a picture. There's the man who brought Hitler to power, Michael Cardinal von Fallhaber. Notice the pyramids. Michael Cardinal von Fallhaber would ordain to the priesthood a man that we all know today, Pope Benedict XVI. Pope Benedict XVI knows all about the Nazi Third Reich through Cardinal von Fallhaber. Now we Jesuits running Russia, we're going to put out the truth. <clears throat> we're going to show how the Pope controls the Nazis. But because it's communist propaganda, it's not true. And the Jesuits, we Jesuits can have our hue and cry against communism, while all the while we secretly run it. The torture, the torture, Thomas de Torquemada, more torture. Square in Madrid, they're bringing the heretics to death, and notice here the pyramid, just like Auschwitz. Don't you know they had fun planning this for World War II? We're going to kill these heretics and liberals and nationalists all under the guise of communism and Nazism. Here we have the burning in autos de fe as far as India. It's international. Our inquisition is international. And of course, we have a modern day auto de fe of these concentration camps in Germany. All autos de fe. Confess. And if she wouldn't confess, if they did not renounce their heresies and they were given the Iron Maiden, they were put inside here and the doors were closed and the points were slowly pressed into you so you could have a nice excruciating death. And here's a rendition of it. Well, the Pope's power begins to wane. And we're going to have coming the Protestant Reformation with Martin Luther. Well, here's passages of Scripture. For there's one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. If that's the case, you don't need a priesthood. One sacrifice for all. If that's the case, you don't need Mass. 
Once forgiven, you don't need to obey the priest. And here's Luther standing true. Here's Luther on the restoration of the Jews. And Luther on refusing to persecute the Jews. Luther never wrote on the Jews and their lies. We wrote it. To unite the Lutherans and the Catholics together against the Jews. Okay. I'm going to hurry on here because I believe I'm running out of time. Here is Henry VIII. And here's Loyola. He founds the Jesuit order. Under Ferdinand and Isabella. He goes to Jerusalem. IHS. They bring Horus to power with the, with the pyramid. Isis Horus Set. That's our symbol. 32 points. Three more. And one here. 36 points. If you add them arithmetically, you come out to 666. Loyola sees the vision. Again, the triangle. This is the Jansenists. And they portrayed the Jesuits here as bringing forth Horus. And look at the owl. You seen the owl before? Seen the owl on the dollar bill? This is our Federal Reserve note. We run the Federal Reserve Bank. We put our owl on the dollar bill. Because you see, we started Bohemian Grove. The symbol of Bohemian Grove, white background, red letters, with black, just like this, just like our Templar, just like our Teutonic Knights. We run Bohemian Grove because you see, Bohemian Grove is based upon our Isis, our Virgin Mary, and we have the owls with the protectors of Isis. And here is a Bohemian Grove religious worship, the triangle. We have the bishop here. We have the Pope here, all going on in Bohemian Grove, just like Pacelli in Bamberg, just like the Pope, Triple Crown. He is the patron saint of Bohemian Grove, John Nepomuk, St. Francis Church, Old Bohemia. And of course, Bohemian Grove is only 70 miles north of San Francisco University, which telephone number used to be 666-6666. <laughs> okay. Loyola sees the vision, spiritual exercises. I will believe that white that I see is black, and the hierarchy church if so defines it. This is JFK. Hey, we're sitting, we're at the, we're in the, we're at the uh, you know, looking glass here, people. White is black, and black is white. Remember when he says that in JFK? All Loyola. Well, Loyola is chartered. We're called upon to win all nations, all the kingdoms of the world. I leave you the world. Not all Jesuits know of this, only the top, only the ones at the top. So the Jesuits, we are, our concern was to take Jerusalem from the Muslims. We did this with Allenby. And of course, the Sultan of Ottoman Empire worked with us because he was a brother Freemason. And then we, we allowed them to kill all the, we had them kill the Orthodox Armenian people, a, hundred, a million five of them because they're heretics. We established the Latin Kingdom of Jerusalem in 1948. We used our Masonic Jewish labor Zionists to do so. In fact, we have a Nazi coin and a labor Zionist coin. They all work together. Stalin, Truman, Masons immediately recognized Israel upon its creation. And we will assign the hexagram to be the sign of the, of the nation of Israel, our revived Kingdom of Jerusalem. Cardinal Bia will work with this. Cardinal Bia was uh, a very powerful Jesuit. The ADL is our control. Uh, we control the ADL. ADL works with the FBI. Again, hexagram, St. Patrick's Cathedral. Hexagram and another cathedral. Hexagram for the Merovingian bloodline. Juan Carlos, the real controller of the Kingdom of Jerusalem, not of Malta, Jesuit trained. Here we have Lewis Mortimer Bloomfield with Ben Gurion, Kennedy assassin. Angleton with Ben Gurion, working together for the establishment of the Masonic Kingdom of Jerusalem, and this is in Elat. Well, we create higher level Freemasonry. We wed Jesuits with Masonry. 
We create the justification for our new kingdom of Jerusalem with Ribera. And we Jesuits, we, discover, we, we study the temple because we're going to rebuild the third temple. And it looks something like this. After this crusade, we will be able to rebuild it. Jesuit Edmund Walsh with Dirty Harry Truman. And what, is, what does FDR do? He recognizes USSR, and, he recognize, and Truman recognizes Israel in the presence of Jesuit Edmund Walsh. Without the U.S., there is no USSR. Here, the, we have the Jesuits in total control of the Vatican. And any pope that disagrees, disobeys, well, he's history. We have the Inquisition, the Pope, the Black Pope, and the Grand Inquisitor. We have King George III. He was our, our stooge, because you see at his wedding, he displayed our IHS. <laughs> we have controlled the British Empire since King George III. We have controlled the American Empire since, the, since we assassinated Lincoln. Here's Stonyhurst. Stonyhurst is where we control England. We're going to start the Boer War. We're going to kill these white Anglo-Saxon Protestants out of South Africa. They're heretics. And of course, the queen is subordinate to every pope. Idi Amin. We're going to bring Idi Amin to power. <clears throat> and Idi Amin is going to kill 250,000 Anglican black Christians. Nelson Mandela, the Knight of Malta, working for the queen, along with Robert Mugabe killing the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants out of South Africa and Rhodesia because you see they're a bunch of heretics and we want them all dead. The Knights of Malta, the new knight of Mount Malta here is festing. This is the man that killed Lincoln, Jesuit priest Bernardine F. Wiggett. So when you see the new movie with Nicholas Gage, you know, just remember he's not going to mention Bernardine F. Wiggett. Here's Taft, the bonesman, in church at St. Patrick's Cathedral. The papacy controlling, wash, warning that we be controlled. Well, now it's controlled completely. The Jesuits taking over the White House, Capitol, destroying our public schools, because you see our public schools used to have the Bible in them. And we should teach about the Inquisition, but we can't have that now. And here are the gangsters that took it over by 1901 and there's James Cardinal Gibbons the first American Pope Georgetown and now the assassins of Kennedy Spellman McGinley, McGinley the head Jesuit at Fordham Cardinal Cook FBI agent Frank Sturgis submitted a 22 page written confession to him as to what happened in Dallas that day Interesting, we've never seen it. Knight of Malta, Bishop of Fort Worth, and his boy. Who saw the head wounds? Why didn't he ever tell us about the head wounds of Kennedy? Here's the funeral. Teddy, Jacqueline, Bobby, Cardinal Cushing. J. Peter Grace, head of W.R. Grace. Director of the FBI, assistant. Henry Luce and his wife bought the Zapruder film. And this is right before the assassination of Waldorf Astoria. Alexander Haig, he was a part of the assassination. And his brother, who's a Jesuit, Francis Haig, who's sitting right here. Interesting, Alexander doesn't say anything about his brother. David Ferry, who was a Jesuit novice, just like me. Yeah. <laughs> and here's Earl Warren. Ed Mason, 33rd degree. Now, look like a couple of Klansmen, doesn't it? Of course, Klan comes out of Freemasonry. Skull and Bones, the Bundy brothers. Jesuit Dan Lyons. Lindy Boggs. Jesuit priest O'Hare, he's a CFR presider. Avery Dulles, he's behind 9-11 and the Kennedy assassination. Vernon Walters, Martin Lucifer King, 
We're going to use him in the civil rights agitation, not for the benefit of any black man. Because the one who was going to benefit the black man was Malcolm X. We're going to kill Malcolm X. And we're going to use King because, you see, he's nothing but our boy before the Pope, along with Ralph Abernathy. There's Condoleezza Rice in Georgetown. Georgetown hosts all the CFR. Here's the head of Georgetown. So now we have communism. Sir Thomas More is the author of communism. They perfect communism on their Paraguayan reductions. And we're going to use a Jew <clears throat> to make it look like it's Jewish. And we're going to tutor him in the British Museum. And by the way, Marx called for the death of every Jew. The fact that the Jews have become so strong is to endanger the life of the world. <laughs> Causes us to disclose their organization, their purpose, that is a stench might awaken the workers of the world to fight and eliminate this cancer. Marx wanted the destruction of every racial Jew. <clears throat> There's Stalin. <clears throat> Stalin is trained by priests. Jesuit Walsh in Russia, 1922, stabilizing the Bolsheviks. And there's the master, Lutachowski. Walsh at Georgetown. What does he do? He affects the readmission of a Jesuit order in 22, the adoption of the Jesuit Gregorian calendar in 23, FDR's recognition of USSR in 33, Henry Ford's aid to USSR in 33, and $11 billion lend lease to Stalin. Without America, there is no Soviet Russia. And the one behind it is Jesuit Edmund Walsh. Errol Harriman, Bonesman, Knight of Malta, Size Lend Lease. Harry Hopkins, our boy. He lived in the White House with FDR without a title. Bonesman, Harriman, Hopkins. Hopkins, Harriman. They're Yalta, Potsdam, all the agreements. Now, this is the priest, <clears throat> who's an American assumptionist priest, who from 34 to 45, will be the man who runs the Kremlin and who, through Paskrevishev, <clears throat> will tell Stalin what to do. This is the priest right here. There he is with Wendell Wilkie. Walter Sizek. He was the great Jesuit inquisitor. Thank you. He was the great Jesuit inquisitor for 20 years in the Gulag. This is when he was brought back in 63. He looks pretty good, doesn't he? He wasn't suffering. He was a killer. He murdered more people than any Jesuit of the 20th century. And for that, Lerachowski will anoint his grave. And I just happened to be there that day. By accident, by providence of God, pulled up and saw them there. Well, Islam, you have the Battle of the Panto. And it's interesting that the invasion of Afghanistan would be on the same day that the Battle of Lampanto began. You see, our Knights of Malta started the crusade against Islam on the same day. All right, we're going to defeat the Ottoman Empire. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to rebuild Babylon. The beginnings of the rebuilding of Babylon is Dubai. We're moving all your wealth out of here to Dubai. That's why we're charging the gas prices that we are. We're removing all your wealth out of here to Dubai in the beginning of the rebuilding of Babylon. And we took control of Saudi Arabia because this is Sir John Philby. He would control King Saud. 1933, you have the richest commercial prize in the history of the planet, and the Knights of Malta, Felix Larkin and John McCone would oversee this. The Knights of Malta run Saudi. And there he is, <laughs> Georgie. St. Patrick's Cathedral, the palace of the American Empire, and IHS in its ceiling that the Jesuits run St. Patrick's. 
And here's George J. Tennant getting the Presidential Medal of Freedom for bringing down the World Trade Center, for attacking the Pentagon, and for creating Cardinal Egan's crusade, which I'm sure he'll be rewarded for. We have Joseph Schmitz, head of Blackwater. He was in the Pentagon, he was inspector, and we, because he refused to investigate Blackwater, he resigned. And so now his Knights of Malta, who run Blackwater, can carry on their mass murdering crusade in Iraq. It's all a papal crusade. Here's Prescott Bush Jr., Knight of Malta, Georgie, high level 33rd degree Freemason, father, bonesman, and Nazi, and Jeb, fourth degree Knight of Columbus. So all the secret societies are subject to this man. We control him. He's George with the Knights, head of the Knights of Malta, Andrew Bertie in 91, in the White House. Ah, yes. Now we have a wonderful crusade, my Bertie. Yes, and that evil U.S. Constitution is finally going to fall. And I will pick up where John Paul left off, for the greater glory of the sun god Horus. And thus the ultimate master, the ultimate skull and bonesman is the Pope. Brought to power by us, our Jesuits. And the final Pope who will be killed, brought back to life, will be the risen Pope, the man-beast, the ruler of the world for 42 months. The Jesuits, we Jesuits hate the Bible. We don't want you to read it. So whatever you do, to guarantee us victory, don't read the Bible anymore. And I'm not talking about church. I'm talking about the Reformation Bible, the AV 1611. Don't read it, because you see, that breaks our power. When you start to implement its maxims, we can't stand against it. And the Reformation is evidence of it. So just keep it out of your public schools. Don't read it. Don't have it in your house. And we will control your government, and there will be nothing you can do about it. Because you see, our master is the devil. Well, in conclusion, I want to mention a few things that we can do. The first thing is getting this off. We need to read the Bible, folks. The Bible is the book whereby God will speak to you and he will reveal to you his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again according to the scriptures and is coming back. And this son of God here is not the Horus over here. All right? When you're saved, you will now have the power, the Spirit of God residing in you to resist the devil, to resist this Jesuit international empire that's being built. And the Lord will enable you to do, among other things, begin to restore your nation. White nations can be white. Black nations can be black. Those who wish to mix, they can have their nations. But it's time people had a choice as to who they wish to live around and that we should stop being forcefully miscegenated, forcefully mixed in our nations. Because we the Jesuits, I won't say that anymore, the Jesuits have sought to destroy all national identity. You have to have a national identity, a common history, a common race, a common language, if you're going to have a nation. And to destroy the nations, they have mixed them all. So it's time that we got back to okay, our national sovereignty. We need national sovereignty. There's a nice Polish lady I met here. And the Jesuits hated the Polish nationalists. That's why they shot 15,000 of them in the back of the head at the Katyn massacre using the NKVD. And by the way, the Gestapo and the NKVD worked together for the division and partition of Poland to kill off all of its manhood. We cannot stand nationalists. Or the Jesuits can't stand nationalists. I'm getting in my head. So nationalism must be restored. I advocate that the state of Pennsylvania where I live secede. And that in Pennsylvania, we can have a white Protestant area, we can have a white Catholic area, we can have a black nation. Because there are black men who do not want to live around white people. And if I was one of them, I'd be the same. And it's the same way with white people. It's the same way with oriental people. They want to be around their own people, have their own nation. Malcolm X was a great preacher of black nationalism. He's one of the men, one of the only two blacks that I extol in my book. 
That's the same way it should be for us white men. We should be nationalists. We want to have our own country. The same way with the Jews. They should have their own country. There's 22 Arab nations around. Why can't they have their own country? We need our own nations. We need our own identity. Second of all, we need the Bible in our home. Third of all, we need true patriots. A patriot is someone who will never sacrifice his principle for the benefit of his country. To have true patriotism, you have to have real money. If you have fake money and easy credit, the Jesuits can buy you. You have to have gold and silver coin or currency that's redeemable and such and that you have to work for. And so when you have real money, you can sustain true nationalism. We have to have... <clears throat> Then once we federate into our nations, once we break up this American empire, once we disassociate from Rome on the Potomac, and we establish our own nations within this empire, then we can confederate together and trade with one another for our benefit. And people have a, a choice where they want to live. And then we can have true nationalism. And then we can see real prosperity. And what do you think is going to happen in Europe when we do that here? The Holy Roman Empire being built in Europe is going to want to die. Because the Germans are going to say, we want to be German. I don't want to use the Euro. The Brits the same way. Instead of having 200 countries, we should have 2,000 of them. 2,000 different